We often do a segment on this show we like to call Swamp Watch, but this is a Swamp Watch like we have never done. It's an NBC News investigation that shows under the Trump administration and HUD Secretary Ben Carson, the number of families living in disgusting conditions has spiked. At the same time, landlords are pocketing millions of dollars of your taxpayer money. Sit down, look at your screen, and watch NBC Stephanie Gosk. The rain's coming from the roof right. down oh, through, through here, are. dripping and into these buckets. These walls are the only ah. thing standing between Walter Thomas, his wife Sarah, and homelessness. But the entire apartment complex in Hartford, Connecticut, is falling apart, leaving families to deal with mold, roaches, rodents, even a collapsed ceiling. Erica Pierre is getting her college degree and lives here with her daughter. I don't want her to become an adult and live her life like this. Last February, this property failed a federal inspection by HUD. The landlord was supposed to make repairs, but in the months since, the city of Hartford has found dozens more violations. Yet every month, a check for $1,120 for each three-bedroom unit, most of it paid by U.S. taxpayers, goes to a company run by this man, Eli Fish. In the past two years, nearly a million and a half dollars. The problem is nationwide and growing. NBC News analysis of HUD records has found more than 1,000 properties currently with failing grades. That's more than 40,000 families living in substandard conditions. And then there are properties like this one, which passed HUD inspection, even though it was infested with mice. President Terry Morrison says her landlord never made the repairs. And instead of taking action, HUD kept giving him more time. And then after that, then we give him an extension. And then another and then he'll extension. Send his, exactly. And then his lawyers will get involved, and then there'll be another, another extension. And that's how the months start to build. Pile up to years. After a year and a half of persistent problems and pressure from tenants, HUD finally canceled the contract. When residents at this Hartford building complained about holes in the ceilings, HUD officials agreed to meet, then vented their own frustrations. The tenants recorded it. The system is, is broken. <laughs> we just don't have the staff for it. There's 432 <laughs> properties in Connecticut alone. Yeah, okay. I have, I have five now, Under Housing Secretary Ben Carson, HUD has shed more than 480 staff out of 8,000. There's no accountability in the process. Local activists say HUD does not have a firm grip on what's happening on the ground. For an unethical landlord, this is a boondoggle. You're going to get that check every month, and HUD's not there to stop you. It's not only possible, but it's considered legal and passable and acceptable by HUD. So what do landlords like Eli Fish have to say? Mr. Fish, I'm with NBC News. Can I talk to you about the, not right now. the position of the infill? I'm going to call you later, okay? I've been trying to get in touch with you for quite some time, and I know you said you were going to call me back. Secretary Carson declined to be interviewed, but a spokesperson Mr. said Mr. he has launched a review <laughs> of the inspection process. Today. And, quote, the secretary believes very deeply that families should not be forced to live in housing that's unsafe, and taxpayers shouldn't be subsidizing it. I feel like I'm stuck, stagnated, can't get out. I don't have any control at all over any of this. NBC's Stephanie Gosk reporting there. HUD says the number of failed properties has gone up because they've been doing tougher inspections, but it doesn't explain why these landlords are allowed to keep these multi-million dollar contracts. Let me bring in former Maryland Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards, Shannon Pettypiece, White House reporter for Bloomberg News, who's covered with me the ins and outs of this administration. Uh, Congressman Edwards, I'll start with you and just, we're sort of all watching that with, with our jaws on the, on the set here. Well, I mean, you see people living in the most deplorable conditions, and, you know, HUD actually has the tools to stop this. They can uh, sanction and penalize, fine the, uh, the landlord. They can revoke the contract. There are a lot of tools that they have, and instead what they've done is pass off one inspection to the next ex inspection, and what you have as a result is people living with uh, roaches, rodents, and mold, mold growing up on furniture, um, and with kids with, uh, with asthma. I mean, 
mean, this is really disgusting. And this is where an important Democratic Congress uh, comes into play, because in the House of Representatives, they can call Ben Carson mm. forward and make him explain what's happening and require him to fix the problem. Do you expect that'll happen? There's a lot of discussion about other things like the Mueller investigation, the tax returns, things that may seem a little flashier for, for some of these Democrats. Well, every committee is not doing um, all of those things. And so there is an appropriate role for um, uh, for the committee that oversees uh, HUD uh, to call Ben Carson in front of them and to make an explanation and to get this fixed. I mean, Congress actually changed the, the regulations on housing, but uh, HUD is not following mm. uh, the law. And so I think this is really important uh, for the Congress and for 40,000 families yeah. across the country that are living in horrible conditions. And Shannon, one of the most striking moments in that piece was listening to those HUD officials on that recording by those tenants say, I have a ton of buildings mm -hmm. and not a lot of staffers when HUD has cut the number of staff members that they've had uh, right. over Carson's tenure as, as secretary here. Our reporting is that there's not a, a lot of urgency, it seems, inside the White House to do something about it. Well, and first, that, that's sort of a theme across this administration, this anti-big government. You see agencies uh, you know, from HUD to the State Department just not filling positions, either because uh, the, the people in charge think that, that you know they don't want this large, expanded, big government, and so you know, there's this effort to pull it back. But of course, you still need physical people to do things. Um, and on the, the urgency out of the administration, I mean, of the number of crises in this White House, uh, it would be hard to see how this ever gets to the top of the president's agenda. Um, I mean, even within his cabinet at the moment, uh, you know, there is a controversy around uh, Ryan Zinke right. at the Interior Department. We've seen controversies at HHS previously, um, at EPA. Uh, I mean, there's now talk about uh, the DHS secretary being replaced, potentially the Commerce Secretary. So you're saying HUD's replaced. just too low on the list. I, I mean, it seems that way. I mean, it's, it's, it's never really that. gotten any attention. But I, the only thing I would say, though, is I know the president would like to improve his standing with African-American voters. Say, communities of color. And this could be yeah. an issue that could resonate with them. So if he is looking for an opportunity, this is one. Shannon Petty Peace, Donna Edwards, thank you both for coming on and for walking through all of that with us. I appreciate it. Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel. Why don't you subscribe? It's really easy. Just click on that button down there. And for more news from MSNBC, click on any of these videos here for the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more videos from MSNBC with our newsletters. Head over to msnbc.com newsletters to sign up.